Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today is going to be a very sensitive subject for me um, because I can highly relate. What the heck was that? Um, I was watching a video last night where this lady called her best friend and was telling her best friend that she had anxiety and um, she was a stay-at-home wife. Um, she was pregnant. Her husband worked all the time. And she was basically telling her friend that she, her husband came home Y'all could have told me my hair was like that. Um, she... What the heck is going on? She told her friend that she didn't clean the house while her husband was at home. And, you know, there was just certain things that she didn't feel like doing during the day. And her friend basically called her lazy. Um, and she made other videos basically telling... Like, telling stories of the things that her friend said to her. And I'm just going to say right here that I'm not perfect by any means. I do have severe anxiety and I do get mad and I say things that I don't mean. Or I do get anxious and I shut down and I, you know, shut everybody out. And I do get to where I want to be by myself and don't care about anything. Um, so, I'm not... I'm not going to act like I'm perfect. But I will say this. Um... It is okay to have down days. It is okay to, even if you're a stay-at-home wife with no children or no pets, it is okay to not feel up to par to get up and clean your house or to wait on your husband hand and foot. It is okay to have bad days. It is completely okay not to be okay. So don't feel like you have to be perfect all the time. Now, this friend was not a friend to her. First of all, she should have just talked to her about it and tried to figure it out. You know, what's making you feel this way and what can I do to help or whatever. But no, instead she called the lady lazy. And to me, that's not a friend. I'm sorry. But also, later on after she had her kid or whatever, um, she got to the point where she would wake up. She had postpartum depression. She would wake up and she felt like she wanted to kill herself because she didn't feel like she was good enough for anybody she didn't feel like she was a good enough mom she didn't feel like she was a good enough wife um she didn't feel like her friend supported her you know and if your own friend your best friend can't support you and can't you know i have a best friend and i have told her things before like hey you probably shouldn't do that or that's stupid or whatever but I never told her, well, if you can't stop being lazy, I'm not going to support you. Or if you do this, I'm not going to support you. No. My sense of humor, if people know me, they know that I'm I'm sarcastic. I, I like to talk crap. Not because I'm being mean, but just that's just who I am. I get it from my mom does it. My brother does it. You know, we just, that's just what we do. But this lady was not jokingly telling her, oh, you're crazy or you're lazy. You know, she was like literally telling her, you stay at home all day and do nothing. You're lazy. The lady has depression and anxiety. And what I want people to understand is you make, you saying that, that to them or to anybody, that does not make the situation better. Do you think that her saying, oh, you're going to, you're lazy, you know, is going to make her get up and clean her house? Because it's not. It's going to make her feel worse about herself. It's going to make her believe that everything she already feels about herself is true. It's going to make her question every single person in her life. If you can't even go to your best friend and tell them something that's going wrong with you or your husband or your mother and, you know, without being able to trust them, all you have is yourself and you end up locking yourself away. It's just a, a vicious cycle and this lady should have been there for her friend. Now, last night, I stay at home. I quit my job so me and my husband could try to conceive, you know, I quit my job or whatever. So I stay home and last night, I've had a bad headache for the past three days. So when Andrew calls me on his way home, I ask him what he wants for dinner and let him know I've got a headache. I didn't really feel like making anything for dinner. He's like, oh, well, don't worry about it. I'll pick up, you know, um, Dairy Queen. At first, he was like, you want to get a pizza? And I was like, I'm not feeling pizza, but... So we got Dairy Queen. And not only did he go and pick up Dairy Queen and did not say anything about me not having a good day or I'm lazy or I should have cleaned because that's my job, whatever. Um, he brought me my Dairy Queen. I was laying on the couch watching TV. He brought me my food, brought me my drink, sat down. And when I looked at my burger, I said, you know, what is this? And he was like, oh, I'm sorry. I got the wrong thing. Not one time was he like, 
you're lazy. You need to do this. You need to do that. And it really pisses me off that that lady already felt so bad about herself. And to have her best friend tell her that she's lazy and she needs to basically be a better housewife or be a better wife to her husband. Like, you people don't understand. The people... Not you people, not all of you people that watch my videos or all of you people that are going through, you know, you know what I'm saying. But you have to understand that we already feel bad about ourselves. We don't need you to tell us that we're this or we're that and that it's all in our head and that, you know, we already know all of this. We don't need you to tell us how you need to calm down. It's not that serious. Do you not think we know that? We already know. And if we can make that stop, we would definitely make it stop. We don't like getting that way. But it's not your job to come to us and tell us that we're crazy or that we're lazy or that we have these problems. Or No, you are the problem. You are the problem. It is not your place. Especially if you're close to someone who has these issues or if, you know, you are supposed to be the one that they trust and they confide in and you make them feel like even more shit than they already feel. Like that, you don't... I'm already getting upset about it because it's so touchy for me. We already feel bad about ourselves, so... We do not need you to make us feel bad. And for those of you who have people in your life, toxic people, who tell you, you know, it's all in your head or you need to calm down or it's not that serious or you're making a mountain out of a molehill or you're crazy, all this other stuff that we get all the time. Like, you don't have to have those people in your life. I cut my own father out of my life because I was sick of being, being talked down on and being treated like crap and, you know, being called names. I cut him out. So if you have people in your life that are treating you that way, you it is completely okay to cut them out, family or not. You don't have to have people like that. And if you're one of those people who don't have people in your life currently that make you feel that way, but you have that little voice in your head from somebody a long time ago, maybe a couple, you know, a couple years ago, or maybe even from childhood, that constantly replays in your mind over and over, you can... Oh my gosh, hold on. Anyway, you can message me. I got a couple messages from my other video, my anxiety video, and how, you know, I'm an inspiration or whatever for putting mental health out there because not a lot of people want to talk about it. But, like I said, for those of you that put everybody else down about their mental state, um, you were the problem and you were the reason that we don't come out and talk about things like that. And that's a shame because a lot of people get so scared of being judged they keep it to themselves and a lot of them commit suicide because they have nobody to talk to because of people like you that judge so they get nervous and they get scared and they feel like they can't do anything and nobody's going to understand i'm not like that i mean i do have depression and anxiety and stuff but i don't i talk openly about mine i didn't for a long time because i didn't even know what it was or that i even had it so but, you know, people need to understand that it's a, a chemical imbalance in a brain. Like, it's not something we just wake up one day with and we're like, hey, you know, we're just going to be anxious today. Or we're going to be depressed and want to sleep all day. Or we're not going to take a shower for three or four days. Now, I have never been that bad to where I haven't taken a shower and brushed my hair. I've seen a lot worse than me. So, and, you know, it gets really bad. Everybody, there's different levels of it. And so for you certain people to go and try to make people who already feel bad about themselves feel worse you are the problem you have no right to judge people because of something they can't help and yes i get that there's therapy and they can go and get help but you know what you know how hard that is to even go to even make an appointment or seek out a therapist because people with best friends that tell them they're not good enough or people with family members that tell them they're not good enough. If your own family and friends are telling you that, how do you think they feel trying to go and find a therapist? Yes, that's a therapist's job. They do it for the money. But do you think all of them are going to not judge you? I mean, it's a hard pill to swallow. And I just think that people should be a lot nicer to people and try to understand and that's why I started this whole journey in the first place was to 
put my story out there and I've actually been able to talk to people and to help other people, you know, even with small situations like problems with their job or I had this one girl that messages me about her child's father and, you know, he has issues and I try to tell her how to deal with them. So there's different ways, you know, to help other people and that's why I do it. But I also want to address the people that think that it's just made up and that we just choose to be the way that we are because we don't. We don't like being ridiculed. We don't like being put down. We don't like being, you know, made to feel like it's our problem and that we should just have a an instant magic pill to fix. You know, it's not... It's not that simple, and if you love somebody with an issue, you should you should support them and help them and ask them, you know, what you can do to help instead of, oh, well, you're not feeling good. I'm just going to leave you alone. They'll let you know if they don't want to be bothered. They will let you know when you ask what you can do to help. So, I don't know. I just feel like... Certain people are the issue and they just make it worse. So you need to be there for the people that you love. Mental health issues, physical issue. I mean, I'm not perfect by any means. Like I said, me and my husband are not perfect. I do say things that I should not say out of anger. And I mean, I'm not the only one. I'm human. I have emotions. I have feelings. Mine are just a little more in depth than most people. But I really feel bad that that lady, her best friend, best friend, made her feel worse than she has already felt about herself. Now, you need to think about it. How would you feel if you were talking to your friend and you made a comment to them and the next thing you know someone's calling you telling you that they're no longer alive. How would you feel about that? That's all I'm going to say.